animals yeah. Extinction It's here Oh, but I'm worried I just don't know everyone do you have a nice cocktail downstairs eat some dinner did anyone go outside today mm, good uh, my name is Savitri I direct the church of stop shopping I live in New York City I'm very happy to be in Liverpool and I'd like to introduce my partner and collaborator Reverend Billy Hallelujah. Thank you, Savi. I don't want to thank the Stop Shopping Choir. Were you listening? Did you hear them? Maybe we'll return someday to the Paul McCartney Theater and we'll have 30 singers out here, praise be. The Earth Hallelujah singers. I, uh, I want to talk about happiness tonight. This is Kate. Kate, hallelujah. Let's give Kate, Kate, hallelujah. Uh, some of you know that you, you, you've, you know that we're talking about happiness making a comeback, right? Anybody think that's a good idea here? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now I think that I think that we we uh, you. Uh, you know, we're intellectuals and we're dramatists, you know, who's here, who we are, you know who we are. Happiness is kind of like the goofy aunt that we like don't want to see too much of. 
We're darker than that. We're like, we're, we're uh, yeah. <laughs> we want to have an existential crisis once in a while. Amen. Praise. We, we're, <laughs> And I think that we're dismayed by what happens to people who choose happiness first. You know, I have some friend that goes, goes the way of some kind of California New Age yoga, antidepressants, all, you know, I mean, we see what happens to them. We don't, happiness, not too styly. Amen, Prisby. It's, it, <laughs> amen. These are my shoes. I'm happy with my shoes. I just want to start with the basics today. All right? All right? Start with the basics. I, I discovered today that uh, I'm staying at the, Savitri and I are staying at the, at the Institute for the Art and Practice of, of Dissent at Home. Amen, praise be. And, and uh, hallelujah. I, some of you have been there, it, it, and uh, I discovered that I didn't have my uh, one of my shoes. That I'd gone, come from New York without one of my pointy white shoes. And, and there might be some of you who understand how hard it is for an aging Elvis impersonator to discover that his white pointy shoes are gone. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Tough, tough. A real crisis there. And so, uh, Gary and Lena said to, said to us, no problem. We have, we have Reverend Billy's shoes in the archives of the Institute. And they went to this filing cabinet, opened it up, and here are these boots that I left, uh, you know, three years ago when we, uh, when the choir and I performed at the Casa, hallelujah, down the street. So, these are wonderful shoes, except I notice that one of them is black and one of them is brown. You don't have a problem with that, do you? <laughs> I don't know why that is. They seem to be from the same pair. All right. You might want to know why, 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 let's just get down to the motivation for, for bringing up happiness as a subject. Because we, as a community, are working on, over the last hours and days, supercharging our, our radical activism, our direct action, trying to work through our hesitation, trying to get to, we know we're in the heat of battle around the world. We know there's a place, each of us knows there's a place for us in this revolution. We're looking for that place. I'm bringing up, I'm bringing up, I'm bringing up the, the, the subject of happiness. I truly believe that it's an ingredient uh, in a kind of uh, zealotry <laughs> that might help us all. Amen, praise be. Because there is, there is a leap across. There is a flight up. There is a locking arms and standing your ground, there's, there's a moment that once we decide we're involved in, the, in this revolution, that we're participants, there's, there's a moment there when, when, when we just do it. Praise be. You know what I'm talking about, amen? 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 I mean, that's it. That's it. And we've, we have, we mark our lives by moments when we just did it. There was, there was that, there was that, there was that making love that made that child. We just did it that time. Am I right? Anybody? Anybody know what I'm talking about here? love hallelujah Somebody give me a love hallelujah here today. love hallelujah All right. Happiness. It's good to have that in the mixture of incendiary emotions that you might need for that doing it moment. So that's what we're going to work on today. Amen? We're going to walk out of here. There's only one motive for coming to, to a church to stop shopping show. And that's to stop shopping. <laughs> <laughs> and I got this suit in a thrift store. Damn it! 
All right. So, and stopping shopping is a radical thing. And stopping shopping would stop this Western economy. And stopping shopping is heavy. And I've gone to jail 70 times trying to stop myself from shopping and the people around me from shopping. <laughs> We're talking about unasked for concerts in the back aisle of the ASDA. We're, <laughs> We're talking about standing on the desks of wealth management people in the back room of an illustrious J.P. Morgan Chase, the top financier of climate change in the world. We, we, in the Church of Stuff Shopping, under Savitri's direction, she's our, you know, Joan of Arc figure, we, we go and sing all the right songs in all the wrong places. Amen. Praise me. And one of the places that we, that, that where we, we were, we were the church, we were the church band, uh, was, uh, in Zuccotti Park, uh, in, uh, lower Manhattan. In, uh, September 17th in 2011, we were there. Amen. And Occupy Liverpool. Anybody here? Hallelujah. Occupy Luya. We were, uh, <laughs> we were the choir. <laughs> Just, uh, Radical, secular thugs who like to sing. <laughs> and so, once on, one thing that we had to invent right away there, we didn't invent it. It goes back and back across the labor movement. But we, we, we needed to reinvent it there, put it that way, and that is the human bullhorn. Anybody? <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why I shout mic check and, and you shout mic check back. Then I shout another phrase and you shout it back and we go back and forth. Amen. It's, 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 it's sort of like a very harsh concentrated version of call and response in the gospel tradition. You ready? Yes. Mic check! Mic check! Mic check! Earth hallelujah! Earth hallelujah! Inside, I got some happiness down there somewhere. Amen. All right. Praise be. A preacher loves a pulpit. Amen. Who's that wonderful man who was our MC last night when we, when we all got together? Professor, large, bald head. He was great. Are you here tonight? Amen. Amen. Here he is. Praise be. You did some good preaching there last night. You had a good pulpit relationship. Amen. We. <laughs> Hallelujah! I'm gonna. A preacher can't possibly operate without his, without his freak freak flag. This is where we prove to our audience that prove to the faithful that we're working hard. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, praise be him. Did somebody reach their happiness deep down inside just now? Amen. Praise me. Get down in that, get down in that pelvic area down there. Praise be. Hallelujah. Find that happiness where it's scared stiff. I remember, remember the Woody Allen movie where, 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 you know, he was having, he was having trouble with his sex life and he found a Calvinist preacher strapped to a chair deep down in his pelvis. Anybody remember that? Praise be. Oh, that isn't in, that isn't in my, my script here. Uh, I guess I, uh, amen. W one thing that I noticed right away uh, about, about our, our conference is the graciousness of, of the invitations. One of the reasons Savitri and I decided to come out here is, is rediscovering the radical uh, through theater and social, social, what is it? Social what? <laughs> social action? Change. 
You should have said that before. Somebody give me a change of Louia here today. Change of Louia. Preach it, change. Change of Louia. Change of Louia. Praise be. Amen. Amen. It's gracious because, it, first of all, it says that it's worth it to be radical. And then there's a gentle rebuke there. Isn't there? That we're not quite as radical as we thought we were? <laughs> Who are you? To... <laughs> and then there's this promise. Come together in community. Talk it through. You know, listen to geniuses like James Ledbetter and John Holloway. And, and you know, g g g learn something, baby. Become a radical. Get more radical. And there's a promise there that we will return to being a radical. Or we will rediscover... The thing is, of course, that, that being a good radical is, is, and I think this is where the, 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 the social change, the theater part helps the invitation because uh, being a radical is a strange, weird, dangerous thing to do, and it's always moving. What, what it is is always moving. We just use the word radical because it's a placeholder. Actually, we're off the end of the E in change. We're flying into space off the end of that silent E. We left that behind. There might be some fool on the hill back there. We'll wave and like keep going. Because we, we to be good radicals, are doing that which has, doesn't have names for it yet. Amen? We make change. That's the interesting thing about the idea of artists being social radicals uh, is because that's what we're supposed to do as artists. And of course, we're in a very interesting time right now because the arts, the arts used to be this linear march through the Western canon. Oh, now we're impressionists, now we're expressionists, now we're surrealists. And we, we used to have this march in which we destroyed the thing in back of us and we had something in front and we like, the old guys went, went the way of all flesh and we got to make, uh, you know, make money and get laid. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you know what? We are all happy for you. Here in the church of stop shopping. <laughs> Amen. It, it, it's, it's gracious because it's timely. It's really something that, that, that is on our minds. We arrived at this conference. We didn't get, get talked into the title of this, this. This is an invitation for a party that we wanted to go to. Am I right? We, 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 we entered, we, we came through, we got, we, we saw the yellow submarine at the airport. We said, we're in the right place. Now, I just came from Montreal, the World Social Forum there. This is the kind of thing that, that everybody was talking about there. Uh, I would say that the, the single thing that I noticed in Montreal, addressing how we would be radicals at this moment, the single thing that I kept seeing I noticed that indigenous people were going from session to session to session to session. Everyone, it, it, you could be Indonesian collective of mother f fisher people. Everybody. You're from Peru. You're from Sri Lanka. You're from downtown Chicago. Well, everybody, everybody, whatever neighborhood you're working in, whatever, whatever, whatever devil you had, you're standing out in the middle of industrial agriculture, drenched in glyphosates in the middle of the state of Iowa, wherever you were coming from to be in Montreal, everybody had this one thing, and that is, I've got to get better at knowing intuitively, in my body, knowing how social action and earth action are integrated. And the degree to which we didn't know was really amazing. The, de the degree to which indigenous people, wherever they were from on, the, on this, the, this earth, did know right away. <laughs> and I tried to get out ahead of them. I would see, I would see them going, and I'd, I'd, go, in, I'd go in the door with them. Because <laughs> I want to be, you know, I want to be the Elvis impersonator version of a Lakota Sioux. <laughs> Amen, praise me. <laughs> I've got a strange career, anybody? So, the first thing that they would say 
The earth is a living thing. Let's, let's think about that. The earth is a living thing. The earth is a living being. The earth is a living personality. The, the earth has moods. The earth has health problems. The earth talks to us. The earth is a dramatist. The earth is very dramatic. And then they would start talking about, about the, since 1980, the, what we call natural disasters, <laughs> have tripled, not just the ones that we associate with climate change, we concentrate on climate change for good reason, but the tsunamis and earthquakes and the, the, the bones of the earth are turning over. It's a basic expression by the whole place, by the whole personality, the whole earth -alleluia. Well. You see, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm a Western man type. <laughs> and I don't have a lot of words. I, I very quickly can't name the words I need to use. I'm coming to, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to a point of kind of stuttering here. But I'm hoping that you're stuttering with me. We're at the edge of the cliff together, amen? And knowing what it means to us that the earth might be intelligent, <laughs> that's been ruled out of our lives for centuries. I mean, if the indigenous people in the audience, I apologize to you. It hasn't been ruled out of your life. It's been ruled out of a lot of the people that I can just barely see in the light here, amen, Prisby? I know you're Western people like me, baby. Yeah, we don't have the words. It seems like we got to get the words. We have more words for social action than we do for earth action. Now that the two things are the same thing, you know, we can kind of bring over some of the words, some of the words from the labor movement, the civil rights movement, the peace movement, the women's movement. We can bring over from the gender rights, the immigration. We, we can, we can bring, we can bring, we can try to patch it together, baby. I think that the earth will name itself to us if we can get silent enough in a forest for long enough just let it come in earth hallelujah we're trying to do something here tonight for which we are not very prepared earth hallelujah We know we're made of the earth, but we're divorced from the earth. We know that we walk around with a weight. The Beatles saying, well, you're going to carry that weight a long time. We're carrying a weight all day long. We know. We read about it. We know the life systems of the earth going off the rails. We can't be sure of our children or grandchildren. We can't be sure of our own lives. And we watch the governments and corporations. We know that they don't have our interests or the interests of life in their sights. We're trying to do something here tonight. And we're not very prepared. We don't have the words. We usually work in intellectual designs. We're just blindly calling something we need happiness. Be with us today. Give us the strength so that we can leave here and fire that CEO God that made us the chosen people, that made us follow that GPS fossil fuel pillar of fire across the desert, and promised us that he would kill the beasts, keep us from the wilderness, and kill the natives when we got to the promised land. Please, we're ready to go sideways now. 
We're ready to leave that pillar of fire. Leave the fossil fuel behind. We know that when we look away, we really believe it will, it will go away. It'll just turn into ashes in the sand. Let us walk back into the beasts. And back into all the gods and goddesses that, that came to us out of the natural world. That our particular contract with that single military god ruled out. We didn't just kill the natives at the promised land. We killed all the gods and goddesses. We killed the beasts. We killed everything that we were afraid of. We became afraid of everything we could see. We know our history. We want to move beyond our crippling shame now and find radical happy land. Well, that's the promised land with the beasts. Yeah, that's in the wilderness. That's that's leaving the pillar of fire behind. That's uh, going sideways. Amen. Praise me. You know, they, they say that Eskimos have 60 words for snow. We have 600 words for happiness. We're in the age of happiness. Isn't that strange? What we're, what we're watching is, 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 is this tremendous acceleration of earth upheavals parallel with this tremendous, uh, 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 deadly world where people that we thought were our next door neighbors are spraying second graders with submachine gun fire. That's happening every day. Those events, those suicidal mass murders, have tripled since 1980 uncannily in the same rising curve, parallel to what the Earth is doing. I can't explain that. It's part of the weight that we carry that we just simply do not have an explanation for. Leaders don't talk to us about it. You've got to find a poet to talk about it with you. Who do you, who do you talk to about what's going on with us right now? I just, I blundered into a poem by Kreshla, Sheshla Milos. How do you pronounce his name? What? Sesla Milosh. And he said it was called Slow River. Slow River. And he said, We will conquer liar after liar after liar with patience. And then suddenly, the earth will return all at once, like a spring day with bright lands and seas. It's just a message to keep going. We are surrounded by liars. And they lie in such sophisticated ways. 600 kinds of happinesses. We're choking in, in this, the launch of every product, the launch of every idea, the launch of every government policy, the launch of every new colonial, neo-colonial invasion of another country. It's it, 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 it just surrounded by marketers that push happiness at us. It's always about fossil fuel, whether it's lipstick and perfume, underwear, or the invasion of Yemen. It's always about fossil fuel. It's always about the death of the earth. But you have to kill us too. It kills our language. That, that lacuna, that emptiness around the issue of earth activism. So quickly we run out of words. We know the environmental movement is so weak, not realistic to the situation. All the websites of the big NGOs covered with cliches, dead language that teach us nothing. Trying to get donations. We look for those words, and the words are not there for us yet. Oh, I want to give you an, I want to give you an example of what of, I think of it as a middle class, upper middle class American consumer example. But maybe you can find something from it. We all week long, 
are just, if we just move our hand, we're burning fossil fuel. We're burning fossil fuel. We're following that pillar of fire. And that's what we do. I read somewhere that the per capita consumption of fossil fuel for the average American is 20 times the consumption of a person from Western Europe. It's outrageous. This is what we do. Amen. This is, this is, this is a part of our, our definition of landing on the, on the, on the beach and like, yeah, yeah, look at that big empty continent. I'm going to kill the na natives. I'm here. It's the promised land. And something about that fits in a deadly way with fossil fuel, and I'm sorry. But we do that all, all, all week long. Cleaning, cooling, heating, driving. We, we just do, do it all day long. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Then we get to Saturday. What happens on Saturday in benighted America? <laughs> well, we have, we have a selection. <sighs> might be video games, might be sporting events. The cultural driver of the weekend is the big Hollywood movie. It's become so important to us. That shopping has become so important that the the grosses of the big blockbusters in the United States are headline news. That, 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 it's, it's because the story of the story of the story of the story is like just flooding us, amen, praise be, killing us, killing our language. The reason I say killing our language is because we have caused, in the five-day work, work week, we have caused climate change to happen. Then on the weekend, what is the narrative? What is what is the background? We have the cute little, you know, we have the cute little stars in the foreground here that become our point of view, you know, that we look around. But what is the whole thing about? It's the apocalypse. It's about the end of the world. Movie after movie after movie, video game after video game, the apocalypse. That's the music hall vaudeville. That's, that's the comic book. That's, that's what we're looking at. That is our entertainment. What we're causing to happen during the course of the week becomes our entertainment with the, with the, you know, the 15 or 20 bucks that we've been able to scrape up. And then we start Monday again. What happens in that cycle is that really discussing the end of the world becomes impossible. Well, we have to do that. Earth activism requires us to be honest with each other about the situation we're in. And as a culture, we're not. I mean, the number of people that are really, really public figures who address where we are right now in our life, life systems, they are oddballs. Unknowny, Neil Young, a very small number of people that really have, really have the ear of, of large numbers of us. No leaders. No, 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 no political people. You know, you get Jeremy Corbyn and Bernie Sanders in a room together, maybe. No, that 600 happiness, that 600 happiness program. Choking us in all these happiness brands as we watch Larger and larger numbers of people willing to suicide themselves and look into the eyes of second graders. Birthdays, weddings. They find, they seek out the most innocent situation and watch the look on people's faces that they're killing. Then they kill themselves. Mike Church! Mike Church! Mic check! Mic check! Hallelujah! Deep down! Inside! We're rising up! Coming to the surface! I have an anger! I have an anger! And inside my anger! I have love! And laughter! children there's a kind of there's a kind of tensile strength that our action has a kind of theatricality that we're willing to have 
a, a, a kind of willingness to embrace exalted embarrassment, the kinds of things that we need to change the people around us. And we have never changed anything in the United States unless enough of us were willing to risk our life and limb. And we're in the heat of the battle now. We have to stop the pipelines in the United States. They're coming into New York. They're crossing Iowa going north. They're coming down from North Dakota, coming south. At Standing Rock. Native Americans are coming from as far away as Chiapas, the Yukon, Alaska. They're gathering there to face down that pipeline of, of, of tar sands, crude and f fracked gas. They're, they're, they're starting to handcuff themselves to ex excavators as they pray their ancient prayers. This seed of happiness that we have inside of us is made of 200 million year old sunlight. It's a happiness fuel. We have the ability to, to enter revol revolution by entering evolution, by going down into the seconds and minutes. Embracing the fight or flight. Admitting to ourselves that happiness has darkness in it, that, that life has death in it. Our action has a tensile strength, a zealotry, an invasiveness, a power. If we take nature into ourselves, oh, earth hallelujah, we know where our garden should have been. We know where our wilderness is, the wilderness that calls us her garden. We can feel it just beyond the oil stains in the streets, the tortured rock edifices. We feel your power. We need you now. We have to change in a radical way. Fly out beyond that silent E at the end of change. Become artists again. Earth Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Billy. Um, we, we do have a few minutes if people wanted to have some questions and answers. So, yeah, we can spend about 12 minutes doing that. Does anyone have a question? Okay, so. <clears throat> uh, is the, the question, I think, was where does Reverend Billy come from? Is that correct? <laughs> Um, you mean geographically or the birth of Reverend Billy? <clears throat> I'll let you answer that. You don't know? <laughs> We've been married 15 years. Um, I'm an American. <laughs> Let's, uh, Let's avoid that this time. Well, I can, I'll, I'll just give a brief, because Billy just talked for 20 minutes. Um, so in the late 90s, there was a push in New York City to um, clean up Times Square uh, that was led by the Disney company. Um, I think you had a similar thing happen in Liverpool when it was the UK culture city, right? There's this sort of sweep the life off the street and bring in, you know, um, corporate entertainment and uh, international brands. And in any case, Reverend Billy 
uh, started preaching in front of the Times Square Disney store in, I guess, 1999 or so, um, largely in response to this cleanup, this sweep, this gentrification, um, which really was kind of the uh, seminal moment in New York City's uh, drastic and terrible change into the city it has become today. Um, just a warning to you all in Liverpool, hold on to that which you love. Um, and then people started sort of clapping and activists started telling Billy about sweatshops. And um, so the choir, the Stop Shopping Choir, sort of emerged from the street, really. Um, they recognized, and Billy, a very loud voice, a great bullhorn. So <laughs> uh, that was kind of the shortest version, I think, of the the, cr the creation story of Reverend Billy. Uh, you know, other stuff on the way as well. Um, I, I find hope from the earth itself, from the magical complexity of the earth, and I find hope um, in the community of which I'm a part, which uh, luckily is full of a lot of different kinds of people who are saddened and shattered and ruined by very different things than I am. So um, on a good day, at least two or three of us are in a okay mood. Um, <laughs> so I, I think that, you know, the answer in both places is diversity, is really complexity. Um, but I also, I don't hold much value in hope, really. I find it, it that's a, one of these dead happiness words to me. And I think um, we try to sing every day. We try to, uh, um, you know, keep on failing, I guess. Um, so that's all, the answer is also, I have no idea. We know how to fail, right, James? He's from the Midwest, so they're much more hopeful than like me. We have a tradition of goofy, false happiness. Well, James, we, um, you know, we sing in uh, the hollowed out summits of Appalachian Mountains that have been bombed by the coal miners. We sing in redwood forests. We sing concerts to tree sitters up in the 2,000 year old trees. We try to uh, stop the tour bus in, when we were on our way to um, Ferguson. Missouri and uh, uh, the the world headquarters of Monsanto in St. Louis, and we try to stop the bus, walk sideways, away from the pillar of fire. You know, end up like talking to a surprised farmer that you know has a a large, gay, mostly black choir walking towards him. <laughs> So, uh, you know, New Yorkers have to, uh, because our city is an addiction, we, we, have, to, we have to on purpose go uh, into the earth. You know, we, we have, uh, you know, uh, we've been out in the water. We've been out in the Coney Island. We defend Coney against hotels and chain stores a lot. Salvatore is a former mermaid queen of the Conan. Uh, what did I say? Conan? What did I was that a was that a Freudian slip of of <laughs> terrible dimensions? Coney Island and uh, uh, the Hudson River. Um, now we're battling against glyphosate spraying from um, crop dusters and um, city parks departments and highway departments and and schools. A lot of we're drenched in this virulent carcinogen in the United States in schools, and there's some of that going on in the UK. We're we're still studying it, but. 
you have a problem with your uh, with your highways and with your your um, the tube stations. We just came from staying at Leah Boromorrow's house in uh, London Field Station. London Field Station is is uh, drenched with glyphosate. She told us, <laughs> and so uh, we're uh, we have UK friends joining us uh, in trying to clean up. And that's that's going to the earth. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know that's that's like climate change. You're dealing with invisible. You can't touch. It, you can't smell it. You can't. You know, it's it's in the nanomolecular genetic engineering world, uh, where the where the corporations have dumped lots of poisons in. I see some nodding heads here. You know all about it in uh, in in this commons uh, beyond our naked eye. Beyond the range of our vision, uh, so uh, that's another way. And we just have to, on purpose, go to the earth again and again. I mean, there's a, a million answers to your question, and there's a million resources for um, the problem of, of shopping. I think when we say shopping, we mean it in its broadest sense, which um, encompasses everything from the distribution of um, goods to the distribution of wealth. So um, my short answer to you is um, to look into another human being's eyes, which is the fastest way to stop shopping and if you can't find a human, another animal will do just fine. <laughs> and I'm really not being um, flip, you know, flippin'. I'm I really, I'm serious. Yes. Uh, is it okay to buy books from you from nowhere in the foyer? <laughs> Please buy books from news from nowhere in the foyer tonight. And there are, oh yes, there is a, a conference-wide book signing down. I think everyone in the conference who has a book out there will be signing downstairs. And here's Sarah. Let's all applaud for wonderful Sarah and her work Sarah. organizing this. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah, thank you. And then we'll sign Sarah. All of us. We'll sign Sarah, everybody. <laughs> Maybe one more question, and then I think we have to wrap. Yes, You ain't nothing but a hound dog. The, the, the one that, I, that I've come to love over the years uh, is a difficult one to sing. But it's, it's uh, he was, uh, in 1968, overwhelmed by Sir Paul and everybody else. He was feeling lonely and he was in his uh, Memphis mansion shooting televisions and <laughs> and in 1968 Bobby Kennedy and and Dr. King were killed within a few weeks of each other and um, he called one of his favorite songwriters and um, he said let's let's make a song that responds to this this situation our terrible mourning in this country and um, I'm just going to, I only know a few bars of it, but um, uh, I would invite you to um, go on YouTube or whatever and, and listen 
to Elvis Presley singing this song that is really a patched together. Uh, it's words from Bobby Kennedy and Dr. King patched together. <laughs> and the, well, the, well, the ones we notice are Dr. King because he had a better scriptwriter himself. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, there, there must be birds flying higher somewhere. Got to be lights. What is it, Savi? <laughs> There must be lights burning brighter somewhere. Got to be birds flying higher in a sky more blue. If I can dream of a better dream where all God's children walk hand in hand, tell me why. Oh, why, oh, why can't my dreams come true? Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Earth, hallelujah. Uh, we we love it when uh, people communicate with us with thoughts that may rise up in their bodies uh, a day or a week later after uh, we've had a church service. Uh, so please do, you know, uh, uh, contact with, you don't have to have a very good reason, just uh, contact us and uh, we'd like to have that conversation. Amen. Thank you.